Hello everyone and welcome! In this video we're going to be looking at Captain Cece and how to pilot her. This is not a deck tech, rather a game guide on how to play her from turn 0 forward to reaching your combo. And also covering what happens and what do we do if our combo fails. How the combo actually works and the entire combo package with Paradox Engine and Captain Cisse, I'm not going to show that in this video. That has already been shown in previous videos I have made and you can look at those on how the combo actually works. All you need is Paradox Engine, Mox Opal and Captain Cisse and then you go. So this deck is basically a timing pushing deck. We want to put CC in as fast as humanly possible, because CC is part of the combo and CC is going to fetch the rest of the combo with Parrot, being Parrot being legendary. And to do that, we need to put a lot of ramp into a deck that makes our CC enter turn 3, or faster than that if possible. And therefore, our opening hand on turn 0 is quite important. So let's look at this opening hand. We have a Hushwing Griff, Sylvan Library on Portuguese, Source of Plowshare, then we have Plain, Forest, Forest, Plains. So this hand is pretty bad. Sure, we do have some good cards. We have the Hushwing Griff, we have the Silver Library, and we have the Source of Plowshare. These are good interactions and good card draw. However, this is not a turn free guaranteed Captain Cisse, because we only have four lands and no ramp cards, and therefore the card game plan is not guaranteed to get CC out fast enough. However, I will add in that this hand isn't that terrible as it looks like, because we have some good cards here as an insurance. Source of Plowshare and Hushwing Griff are good cards for dealing with enemy problems, because they will deal with some of the very fast combos. Also, Silver Library, even though it's on Portuguese, will still draw a lot of cards. And four lands? Well, we can actually work with four lands. And hopefully, we could be hoping on drawing some of our ramp spells as well. Alright, now we are starting to get somewhere. Here we have two lands, Forest Forest. Then we have a Celestia Signet, we have an Arbor Elf, we have a Lapse of the Serenity, this is a counter spell, it's a white counter spell, Path to Exile and Seaton Cross and Protector. Let's not look too much on Seaton Cross and Protector, he's actually part of the combo. And this hand also offers a turn free Captain CC guaranteed, because it will look like this. We have a Forest, Forest, Arbor Elf and Celestia Signet. So turn 1, put Forest in play, tap it to get Arbor Elf in play. Untap that to put a Forest, second turn into play, tap those, Celestia Signet on turn 2. Turn 3, we have 4 mana. Tap all those, CC in play. Voila! So in the end, this is a hand I would definitely keep. But let's stay on turn 0 for a little bit longer. I wanna show you something. What you are looking at right now is a 7 cards in hand turn 2 win. We are basically going to do this. Start with putting the planes in play, tap that to put Sol Ring in play, put Mana Crypt in play, put Chromox in play, exile Sylvan Library from the game. Now this one taps for green mana. Mox Opal, it will tap for mana because we have too much artifacts already. Tap these ones, getting Lightning Greaves, 4 mana, CC, equip, nice. And this is pretty much where this deck broke budget. Even though I've never had this opening hand in my entire life and I've never seen anyone have it, I will say it could happen. And however, we are going to play this card. Mana Crypt is good, Mox Opal is mandatory, you have to has, have Mox Opal for this deck. You can't actually play this deck without Mox Opal, but you could skip on Mana Crypt and Mana Vault. Chrome Mox you could skip on too, however this deck becomes so much better with these cards. You're also going to need Mana Vault. Anyways, I pretty much think that is it for turn 0, let's move on. Now, the turns before getting Captain CC in action are pretty mandatory. And I would also add in, every turn your Captain CC isn't in play, if she's been killed or so to say, is pretty mandatory. It's always going to be get her out as fast as humanly possible, like I've showed you a couple of times with opening hand. However, we need to know and need to be aware that Captain CC is a consistent turn specific win deck. However, it is not the fastest deck that can win, there are some decks that win more consistent faster on turn 1 and turn 2, however those decks kinda range that sometimes winning turn 6, turn 7 if they are a little bit unlucky. However your deck, your Captain Cisse, is always going to win turn 4, turn 5, always. And that makes Captain Cisse maybe I would say the fastest consistent deck there is. Actually not going to be the only fastest consistent deck because Yi-San and Archon Dagson 
are also doing the same thing, winning on a specific turn. But bearing inside our minds, we need to know about our enemy problems. If they are going to win a little bit faster than you, you do should have a planes in play and a path to exile at the ready. All sorts of plows the same thing. And then following up later with Forest and Celestia Signet. Alright, moving forward. We're getting to turn 3, we're playing Cissé and then passing turn. And then we're getting to turn 4. Now we're untapping Captain Cissé and our Paradox Engine is inside our deck. Now, what are we going to do? The answer is nothing, we're going to pass turn. What? Yes, the reason for that is if we can't play Paradox Engine and another spell, Cissé will be remaining tapped and Paradox Engine will be sitting in play for everyone to deal with. And that isn't great. It is going to be more safe to have your Paradox inside your deck than having it in play. But what about having it in your hand? No, it is also going to be more safe to having it inside our deck than having it inside our hand. What? The reason for that is a very common thing. Wheel of Fortune or Windfall. Derp. Then Parox ends up in our graveyard. Not that great. What we are going to do, however, is on our turn 4, passing priority, passing turn, then the turn goes to our last opponent, and in his end step, we tap Cissé and put Paradox in our hand. And that means all form of sorcery things, like Windfall and uh, Wheel of Fortune, that's our sorceries, are going to be unaffected. They're not going to disrupt us. Also, an important note, sitting on turn 4, with Captain CC untapped and all our mana untapped, is a pretty okay deal. Because we're going to be at the ready with a Hushring Grave, Lapse of Serenity, a good counterspell for white, Source of Plowshare, and Path of Exile. I have more, but I just want to show you that sitting with interactions at the ready is quite good and quite important in CEDH. Because turn 4 is where most games end. I actually have no statistics on that. I don't know. My point is, be ready to deal with your opponents. Anyways, now we're getting to turn 5, and this is where this video is kinda ending, in this area. We're going to jump a little bit after this to see what we're going to do when this gets disrupted. Because what we're going to do on turn 5 is play Paradox Engine, putting it in play. And let's say we have no mana whatsoever ready, we tap out for Paradox Engine, we tap Cissé, fetch our legendary Mox Opal, trigger, untap Cissé and a couple of artifacts and mana dogs over here to get more things going. And this is the way we combo off and win. And if you want to see the combo, once again, look at this video over here in the corner. Instead, let's talk about what we do when this happens. Because this is eventually sometimes going to happen. Nature's Claim is a pretty common card run and played in CDH because it deals with a lot of combos like this one and others. You should play Nature's Claim in your CC deck too, by the way. For a very specific reason, we're actually going to jump back a little bit back to turn 4. Alright, so we're back on turn 4. Paradox Engine is inside our deck. Captain CC is ready to go. Nature's Claim is on our hands. And we're having 6 mana available. This is important, we're having 6 mana available, I hope you do the count. All we need to do on turn 4, tap Cissé, fetch Paradox Engine, play it, one more mana left, use Nature's Claim on whatever, I don't care, just don't use it on your Paradox Engine. But you could do it on one of your own artifacts if you don't need it. Because what will this will do is it will untap Cissé, and then we go, we're fetching the Mox, Opal and voila, keep on going. I actually have had a game where I did cast Swords of Plowshares on one of my mana dogs, I think it was Lanoa Elf, and what it basically meant was Swords of Plowshares became sacrifice one of your creatures, untap all your stuff. And for one mana that is good, especially when that helps you win on that turn. In other words, you need to know if you can win the turn 4 thing. And that helps out if you have 6 mana available and have something that costs only 1 mana. Now if you have 7 mana available and has some, have something that costs 2 mana, then do the same thing. However, if you don't have the mana to cast a secondary spell after Paradox Engine, don't do it, 
Do what I showed you earlier and just pass turn and get Paradox Engine at the end step of one of your opponents. Alright, back to the problem if Paradox Engine ends up inside your graveyard. Now, this deck has two rescue buttons to bring Paradox Engine back from your graveyard. The first one, Bow of Nihilia, a legendary enchanted artifact that can be tapped when two mana to put up to four cards from your graveyard to your library. And that means that CC can search once more for Paradox Engine. Great! But we also have Nissa Vital Force, now a legendary permanent. It doesn't say down here, but the rules has been changed. Now she has a minus 3 ability to return any permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. And that basically means Paradox gets back to your hand. Great! In other words, this combo is not an all-in combo, and it can be rescued to be repeated and tried once more, over and over until, well, the game goes too long. Eventually you are probably going to get your Paradox Engine in play, and you are eventually going to tap your CC to fetch your entire deck. However, sometimes Paradox Engine ends up in exile. It is not that uncommon to cast Praetor's Grasp and just pick it out from your deck, or someone will just exile your graveyard. That happens. And what on earth are we going to do then? Well, my game plan for my deck is basically to beat people down, kill them with creatures. That is something that the old CC deck actually did before Paradox was printed. Paradox helped CC grow a little bit on the tier level, making her a bit stronger deck. However, that Staxi and that Controlly and that Stompy alternative is still there. You can still play Elish Norn inside your deck. And that is why I play Planeswalkers inside my Captain CC deck, because the Planeswalkers grants me two things really, Nissa Vital Force he helps me get Paradox Engine back from my grave when that happens, but Nissa Vital Force can also create 5-5 five, five creatures, and in CEDH there aren't that many creatures, and 5-5s five, are pretty big, eventually you will kill someone, Especially if that someone is using Ardnesium and drawing a lot of cards and losing a lot of life, or using Necropotence and also losing a lot of life. And sometimes that Ardnesium and Necropotence player ends up in the same situation where you are, unable to win, and has to resort into something like a plan B. And that is where I think this deck triumph, because the plan B isn't that bad. Or well, actually, Plan B is pretty crap compared to any EDH casual deck. However, in CEDH, Plan B is kinda rare. There are a lot of all-in combo decks in CEDH, and if they can't win, well, Plan B is pretty good. And this is pretty much step by step how you're going to operate and pilot Captain CC from turn 0 to turn where you win, and also going forward if you can't win the normal way. Upgrades for Captain CC in the future are going to be cards that help you with plan A, your combo, but will also improve your plan B. And that is why I have Planeswalker once again inside my deck. But I do personally think that there will be coming more interesting legendary cards for Captain CC to improve her plan A combo. Now this is it for me and Lady of the Weatherlight. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.